uh, in this episode we're going to talk about the victim uh, that didn't, didn't get away that I knew personally that was murdered So, anyways, I, I guess this kind I kind of do this in a way for her because I knew her. I I don't have any pictures of her. So, uh, my adoptive father, uh, uh, this is a legal document, it says, uh, have you had any training in child psychiatry? I have worked, and I have been a consultant to the juvenile court, uh, Department of Child Psychiatry, I worked for Orthopedic Hospital, child psychiatry professor at the university of Washington and teaches in, in the Department of Child Psychiatry, Child Psychiatry. So it doesn't look odd when a kid is going to a shrink to get seen by a child psychiatrist, but unfortunately he, he wasn't much different than Dahmer, let me tell you. Uh, he was, on the outside he appeared to be normal. I guess about that, that's about the only trait for my adoptive father I can say that was good was that he was a total psychopath and on the outside he could put on a really good act. He acted like he was normal, personable and all that. But when you got alone in a room with him and there was no other witnesses or people around, you were talking, you were dealing with a completely different thing. He was a total psychopath. Anyways, I showed you his credentials. so. Uh, this is back on this. This is the malpractice award uh, where somebody actually sued my father and it ended up in the paper. A lot of times they sign disclosure agreements when there's lawsuits and all that and they never end up in the paper. But this one actually ended up in the paper. Maybe the guy really wanted to speak out because my father was doing so much damage, my adoptive father, to other people. But he got 75000 It says a variety of medications including Valium, Rilum, Dexedrine, under Dr. Jones's care, the 31-year-old man said the psychiatrist turned him into a zombie. Uh, he used to have patients coming over on the weekend at the houseboat. When I was living there, and uh, he would, and also he had, um, a, he also had a patient, Mrs. Berkland, the one he murdered that I'm going to talk about uh, shortly a little more. Uh, he had her living at the houseboat, and there'd be people coming over doing drug deals and all this and that, and then I was having sex with Mrs. Berkman and, and my father at that point. Uh, he used to dope me up, too, uh, in this other document. Uh, this states where he was getting another doctor uh, to dope me up. It says, uh, uh, you decided, Dr. Tidwell, what about medication Bradley needed? No. They were questioning my mom. No, he took the white pills in a row and got dizzy at school. So I got dizzy at school because he was doping me up. And uh, the person at the court asked him, did you take him back to Dr. Tidwell? And uh, 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 to see other medications should be prescribed. Answer, A, circled. The child is symptom-free. Don't bring me a child that is symptom free. See, he was trying to cover his bases because if he overdosed me when he was molesting me, uh, they would have tied it directly to him, but since he had other people prescribing. But he wasn't so smart with Mrs. Berkland because he, well, he had so many drugs back then and he was prescribing to so many different people, I guess they couldn't have necessarily traced it to Mrs. Berkland, but I did find a bottle of Demerol. And so he had her basically doped up on Demerol and uh, Percodans and uh, Valium, Placidril, uh, Mickey Finns, uh, other antipsychotics. And I have, I have friends 
uh, and drugs and narcotics and all that. And, and I have friends that are still alive that haven't been murdered that, that know about this. So, uh, anyways, uh, Mrs. Berkman was not a good swimmer. And she was drug addict and a drunk. And that's basically what pedophiles or abusers, uh, they prey on the weaker ones because they're easier to take advantage. And if you're, in a, if you're a doctor versus versus a drug addict patient, who are they going to believe? I mean, you know, and they don't know that the doctor is a drug addict pedophile doctor. Who, who are you going to believe? You're going to believe the professional testimony of a childhood psychiatrist. Child, child psychiatrist that has documentation like I just read to you. So uh, this is a, not a legal document here, but this is basically a newspaper clipping. And it says the body uh, was recovered in 45 to 50 feet of water and autopsy ordered. Uh, it says the body of Marion Berkeley. That was the patient. That was the one that my dad was sleeping with that, that he had addicted to drugs and everything. Who lived on houseboat 1214 was recovered from the lake at about 11.45 p.m. And that's one of the, the um, firemen looking for her body at the total wrong side of the houseboat because she was a long difference from there, distance from there. And my father, when he threw her in, he wouldn't have thrown her in there anyways because she might have been able to climb back out. But when he threw her in, she was so doped it up, she didn't stand a chance and she couldn't swim anyways. In the newspaper clipping, it says a companion. It doesn't say a psychiatrist or a child molesting pedophile psychiatrist what he was. It doesn't even say he was a doctor. It says a companion. Had been sitting on the deck at about 11 p.m. Said she, Mrs. Berkland, had been sitting on the edge of the deck. This is his story. And uh, when he heard a splash, he said he threw the woman a line when she surfaced. Well, see, the deal is, is she didn't come back up, and he didn't throw her a life preserver. That's like Freud's psychology. He threw her in. He didn't throw her any life preserver. And uh, uh, when she surfaced, but she went down again. He said she went down again. She never came back up. She was so doped up on his medication. I mean, I didn't get up when I was molested by him. I don't know how if when she was tossed in the water she would have swam. She couldn't swim anyways. They found the body 40 feet away from the houseboat. So... She was trying to get away from him after he threw her in, if, if she could have, even could have. You know, like, like uh, the kids were, that uh, were being attacked by Dahmer, that were doped up by him. That's a fucking, that's a horrible, horrible way to die. This is what just fucking... Frost my ass. It just, this just, I, I can't believe this. This is another article on the paper. Called an accident. So, 
my pedophile drug prescribing father here that got this is for a lot of cases are closed like I said they never go into court court or any of that uh, uh, they settle out of court most of the time but this guy wanted to really really he was really pissed off at what my dad did to him so he he, he wouldn't sign a release to keep his mouth shut he took a he took less money to speak publicly and so her drowning is accidental well the fucking police not one fucking time did the fucking Seattle police ever fucking question me about that incident if she was fucking pushed in the water because she was he fucking murdered her that's what he did he murdered Mrs. Birkeley he murdered Mrs. Birkeley. He murdered Mrs. Birkeley. He murdered Mrs. Birkeley. Can I say it again? Do you think they ever once, the Seattle Police Department or anybody, ever, ever asked my opinion about her death? Ever once? They were probably just trying to cover his butt as usual. And in the paper they called a fucking accident. The medical examiner's office has classified as an accident the drownings Wednesday on Lake Union and at Mrs. Burke, Miss and, and Marion Birkeland, uh, 51, fell into the lake. Well, it, you know, the, it, Mrs. Birkeland fell from the deck in her houseboat at C-124. They don't even got that right. It was 1214, 1214 East Hamlin, which, where she ceased to exist. The patient that I know about that didn't get away from my dad alive. And he tried to kill me too later on in life when I got older. Because I started confronting him on this. And uh, so um, I, I was never ever. They never ever 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 once. No investigator ever talked to me about that situation. Ever. And I'm his son. I lived there off and on. I just wasn't there that night. So maybe that's why they didn't question me. But I was there that night mentally because I know what he would do. Because I know what he did to me. And what he did to other people. That I've had legal records of that I've showed at earlier. So this was no accident. Mrs. Birkeland's death was no accident. And she never got justice. And I never got justice. And I, I'm going to show you more of why. But uh, it was it was no accident. She, she was doped up on his drugs. And he had an anger problem. He abused me physically and stuff. And beat me around. And he molested me. You know. I would have told, I would have told them a different thing. So Mrs. Birkeland's death was no fucking accident. May she rest in peace.